Hey folks, sorry to interrupt. I uh, just want to give a big shout out to my sponsor for this video, and that is Accio, and Accio make projectors. And they sent me this, which is the uh, Accio Wi-Fi projector. And this is a uh, full HD 1080p 7000 lumen Wi-Fi projector. It's compatible with Android, iOS, it's got a HDMI slot, it's got a USB slot, you can put a TV stick in it and it does screen mirroring off your phone. Comes with stereo sound built in, although you can add speakers, you can plug in headphones, you can use Bluetooth headphones. Uh, features an adaptive high refraction six layered glass lens, which means you can have a 40 inch or a 300 inch TV screen in your house or in your garden. Comes with a carry case, comes with a tripod mount, and this thing is awesome. <clears throat> I've got this footage on a screen mirror from YouTube. This is from a, a video by Day Tripper. Shout out Day Tripper. But um, yeah, I just wanted something glorious to have on the wall. And that's pretty cool, isn't it? We'll take it outside and see what it's like outside. So I think that's where it would have its best use, but. As a home cinema, that's not bad. That's an awesome picture. So, sound quality is pretty decent. I think if you go up too high, it's a bit fuzzy, but it's more than loud enough next to me here. I think this is a really cool addition to the household. We're gonna have some outdoor movie nights, I think, when, uh, when the weather warms up or I uh, get the fire pit out. I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, big thank you to Accio. Link in the description as previously stated. Howdy folks, so thank you for clicking on this video. Whew, I'm walking, I'm hiking. It's a winter hiking wild camp. And uh, I'm out with Warren from Linley's 360. If I can turn my camera without tripping over. It's uh, late December, I'm doing a bit of a sort of circular route, only an hour or hour and a half maybe, out to a forest and uh, Gonna do a wild camp. I've got a curry to make later, and uh, all that sort of thing. We just passed over Warren. Uh, Warren knows his railways, and uh, we just passed over a disused railway line, which, rumour has it, was a World War One, uh, like uh, munitions supply line. It's disused now, obviously, but um, yeah, linking the kind of military towns near where I live. <sighs> That's pretty interesting. We're going to do a little bit more walking and then we're going to set up camp, get stuff ready for a small fire later. And uh, yeah, I've got some Indian takeaway to cook. It's so foggy today. It does look lovely, but there are no views to be had. So uh, yes, I think it's retreat to the woodland time. Right, I'll come back when I'm pitching a tent.
we are uh, in a kind of forestry area so we'll be keeping the noise down until after dark we will have a little campfire but again not until later when we need it the nearest footpath is a couple of hundred meters in that direction but we're a mile two miles from the nearest house I think so I think we're golden and uh, yeah this is this is where we are what do you think Warren Oh, it's ideal, ideal. Yep. Yeah, happy we've here. got enough light just here. Yeah, we've got 45 minutes of daylight to get we're tents here. pitched. We, uh, we're going to go centre. Yeah. Centre about there. Yep. Yeah. We are uh, bungalow brothers tonight. We are. We've got the same tent and uh, we're going to set it up symmetrically with a little gap in the middle for the fire. It's happy good. Happy day, isn't it? Happy day. Except I haven't put mine up yet. So no, Warren, be a lot. Warren's is brand new, courtesy of... Carl from Outdoor Gear Outdoor, Essentials. Yeah. Shout he, out Carl. He was good getting was, that to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because this trip was planned weeks ago and I think Carl rushed it out to yeah, Warren. Yeah, he did. Um, but then I got ill so we cancelled it. But here we are. We're doing it. Right, enough talking. Better set up. Dead. Almost dead. Okay, so shelters are up just about. I'm just uh, taking off the pokies from this couple of hazel poles and we're gonna kind of join our shelters together. It's a bit hard to explain, so I'll show when I'm done because uh, we're losing the light. But we have a plan and Hoping to have, you know, these two bungalows with their, you can't even see me, with their two sheltery bits kind of on an angle with a pole in the middle to kind of support them and peg them out to the side and then we can have a little fire in the gap. Does that make sense? Good. Yeah, halfway. Yeah, yeah that's there. Then clove hitch, one on one side, one on the other. Hook that over. That self tightens on this part, won't slide down, uh -huh. and then just stays there. Now we'll see actually if the like, little tents are parallel or not. Well, it works okay. I think that works just. Do we need to peg these out? Yeah, if we lean them a little bit out, then they'll self push. Not really see it, but there's my that shelter, and then that goes up to the pole down the other side to Warren's shelter and then space in the middle for the fire and cooking and a bit of shelter should we need it if the rain comes that's good liking that right let's get finished getting set up okay we are set so uh, yeah you can't see this shelter but it looks blooming awesome Warren bought some Christmas lights too for a uh, festive cheer. I'll see if I can get it on film, but I highly doubt it. I'll talk you through my setup for a change. I don't, I don't, don't, I don't do that often. So I've gone very simple. I've got the XPED 9 down mat long and wide. I've got my uh, wife, wife, white wolf uh, down bag, which I think is a thousand fill and a uh, Trekology Lux pillow, a Luft Lux or something. And uh, that is all I've got at the back there. Got the blue bag with some warm clothes in for later. Got my down jacket. The other blue bag is my poo kit, first aid kit, and then cooking stuff. There's quite a lot here because I've got two half empty gas bottles. I've got a pot to make curry in, a frying pan to fry some onion bargies, and uh, ample water and all that sort of thing. And I've got DD Magic Carpet there, which I was going to put just out here for later for kind of sitting on but whether I need it because I have a new chair so this is a Sunma and uh, extra wide feet so uh, hopefully there'll be no more falling off my chair business so I'm going to get that out and have a look at it I'll say this is the 
backwards bungalow and Warren who's already dazzling us with his head torch is already uh, got his chair up and running you've got the high back version nice and uh, yeah he's in the same backwards bungalow as mine they're both black ultra stealthy and then we've got the bar is open we got beers and wines and as I'm with Warren custard and what's that little Christmas puddings oh really yeah. oh awesome <laughs> So I think it's beer o'clock and then I'll start making curry. So I'm going to switch off for a bit, drink a beer and uh, catch up with Warren. Can you see the Christmas lights behind me? Twinkly, twinkly. How funny. Anyway, see you in a bit. In a bit. Okay. And one from the, uh, from the Lindley's 360 bar. This is the uh, CLWB Tropical Ale. Thanks, Warren. That's good. Salute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't I haven't. No, I was waiting. Come on. I was waiting. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Nice. A little better than everything. Mm. You have. You got well ahead of me. Fill in on this chair. We decided we're going to light the fire now because it's getting chilly and it feels like it's going to rain so I think we need to get it going. Uh, dug out a little pit, we dug down to the clay and kept the earth next to the fire so that uh, we can bury it in the morning. I've got the big wood, we've got the little wood already. Uh, going to have a go at flint and steel I think. It's been a while since I've done that. So um, yeah, going to mess about with that. So I'm just doing the uh, messing with jute twine for my tinder bundle. Set. Now can he, can he get it apart? Just trying to break up the fibres. The reverse of making twine, you know, unwrapping it, pull it apart. You see the fibres all break up. And this is kind of a cheating tinder bundle but everything's a bit wet so I bought this just in case I thought I might as well use it and that you know you end up with that but we need a, a, a fair sized pile of it which I've got over there and uh, I've got my um, little box of um, uh, what's it called tinder from Des Catty as well shout out Des Catty and uh, bit of char cloth that Lindsay sent me from uh, Spoon Angel Makes, shout out to her. These people send me gifts, I do like a gift. But yeah, thought I might as well use all of these things in one go. See if we can't light a fire and have fun. Right, this is a long boring job so uh, we'll come back when we've got a tinder bundle. Okay, so we've got our tinder. This is the thing Des Catty sent me with his uh, logo on there. Awfully nice of him. Thanks, Des. That's a bit of kind of wood shavings of some sort. I think it might be pine, but I'll have that ready. Thanks, Des. Uh, this is my char cloth, which Lindsay sent me. And this is a piece of it. So we're going to put that on the edge of our piece of flint and then just see if we can catch a spark on it they're going below aren't they mm, yeah
it's going to go. Only just, and then it almost went. But, uh, yeah, bit of fire. Warm our tootsies up. Cheers. Right, let's make a curry. It's not a fresh curry, I've got a uh, pot of madras stuff. This has a little bit of spice in the top and then a bit of sauce there. It's a sort of hot madras. So I'm going to fry the chicken, fry the spice, add the sauce, and uh, yeah, that's about it. I've got some tomatoes and coriander to go in as well as the chicken. And, um, and then I've got frying pan and I've got onions and I made at home like a uh, like a gram flour mix with uh, chilies and turmeric and things, I need to mix some water in here and mix this up to make the onion bhaji. So let's get this curry going first, give it a bit of time to cook, and then we'll make the onion bhaji after. I'm going to do this without getting messy hands. That is out 100 mil. So this bit's alright, can mix this fine, but then when it comes to putting the onion in and all that sort of thing and getting it from here to the pan that's where I'm coming up short we'll figure something out these are sliced onions now the trick with onion bhajis Soak your onions, onions in water for a half an hour before you make the bhaji, so then you don't get the really strong onion smell or taste. But I did that at home, so these are hopefully going to be nice. Bubbling 
nicely. I put two uh, big fat pieces of wood for it to stand on so it keeps it up off the heat a little bit and it's just sort of simmering which is nice. Just let it do that for another 15-20 minutes I think, make sure that chicken's cooked. Better up there. That's a good sign. There may be some flame. Nice, that's okay. They look good. Same thing, obviously. You want to go in. Yeah, that's all. Nice. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Smoke in your eyes. It's a bowl full of chicken madras, isn't it? Hmm. Tastes alright. Go. Tastes damn good. Hmm. Whoa. Nice and crispy on the outside, but mm. super good texture. I make them at home like this, only I don't black them on the side. But well, they work alright. Mm. Well, you've got the skill and know-how. I only looked it up during lockdown because we weren't getting takeaways. No, sure. And no. I wanted a curry, <coughs> so I made the effort. <coughs> you all right there? <coughs> yeah. Oh, we stuck up the fire. Dinner was good. The chicken madras was nice. It was warming. What do you think, Warren? You like it? Good curry, excellent. Just what we needed on this chilly December evening. Yeah. Superb. Merry Thank Christmas. You. Merry Christmas. <laughs> ah, God. Yeah, I'm getting hot legs now, so uh, I think we're going to close it down. And we're going to chill and drink beer. And uh, we've got some Christmas puddings warming and a bit of custard. And um, yeah, we've got a bottle of wine to drink. Another bottle of wine. <laughs> yep, that's it for a minute. Just gonna chill and enjoy our evening. Oh, my legs are burning. <laughs>
Right, it is bedtime. Oh, I can't think what the time is. It's about half twelve, quarter to one, I think. But, um, yeah. It's been a nice evening. I've had a couple of beers, a couple of glasses of wine, I've had some nice curry, some good company. What more could a grown boy need? So, I'm going to say goodnight and uh, I lose this jacket actually. I'll see you in the morning. I think Warren's cooking me breakfast. Yum! So, yep. Night night, and uh, see you in the morning. Good morning everybody. Feeling good this morning. I've been up for half an hour or so. It's just, uh, Warren's just woken up so I can speak. But uh, I just, um, my pup trail came out last night. I've just been and checked the footage. Not a sausage. But, uh, yeah, it's all right. Oh, excuse me. I'm just, uh, I'm trying out a new gas stove at the moment. I'll make a video on it at some stage, but it's a fire maple, sort of ultralight titanium one. I got it for kind of this summer, as it were, the coming summer, because uh, well, I like the pocket rocket that I've got. It sits disturb it but it's the pocket rocket sits up on top of the gas bottle and I go places like Dartmoor and things where it's really windy that's you know gas bottle pocket rocket but a cup of water it's a tall thing it's very hard to keep it stable so this one's a sort of low to the ground job the boil time is a bit slower than the pocket rocket but it's um, it's quieter and a little bit more subtle and because it's low to the ground it's easier to get a windshield around it and stuff but uh, yeah I'm just uh, testing it out now and again yeah it's all right it seems all right 
but it's subtle. I mean, it's going now, but you can't, you know, it's not, it's not disturbing the birds like the pocket rocket does. So no fire this morning. We're uh, we're going to tidy that up in a bit. cook on gas. Warren's, Warren's in charge of breakfast. That's a good thing about doing supper. You know, I do, do the meal in the evening. I can have a lazy morning. When I went to, I went somewhere, I was camping with someone, I can't remember. But I said, oh, I'll do breakfast. So they did the evening meal and I bought sausages and bacon and all sorts to cook. And they realised in the morning I had a terrible hangover and Offering to do breakfast is it's not the best job. But say la vie. Uh, yes, so we're gonna have some breakfast, tidy up our mess, take down our shanty town, and then um, head home, I think. I did notice though, these woods are incredibly calm. I've camped near here before with Rob uh, back in the summer, um, but I've, I've never camped in this bit. And um, you can sort of hear the road. The road's miles away. You could sort. Of, I could hear it last night a little bit, and this morning first thing. Can't hear it now. Now there's some sort of ambient noise. But um, yeah, it's a lovely, calm place. You hear deer barking in the night. You hear birds of prey going over. And an aeroplane. So yes, it's nice. I will be back here. We're still in bed. Point the camera at you in bed. Morning. Morning, Mr. CLB. You're not in focus at all. That's weird. Oh, there's a mesh. Yeah, you sleep all right? Oh, very good, very good. It's nearly it's nine o'clock. Disturbed by uh, those deer yeah. barking at each other, but uh, apart from that, super good. That gunshot was loud. Ooh, it, was a, it was a crow scarer. Yeah. Or a gunshot. Don't know. It's one off, so. It was some earlier on. Oh, were they? I didn't hear. Yeah, they, they weren't that loud, they were further away. We were just chatting and there was an enormous bang from a shotgun or a crow scarer and it wasn't far away, it was over there. I mean if they were shooting, like pheasant shooting, there'd be more than the odd gunshot, wouldn't they? It must be crow scarer on the field or Farmer John. That was one further. Been... No, it wasn't. This... That was... Over there. That was a um, gunshot. The scarer things are more, <laughs> more right. gas igniting in a space. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, maybe they're hunting wild campers. Maybe they are. <laughs> maybe they are. Better keep our heads down. When is pheasant shooting season? Down in. Down in after the pheasant. Must be, it must be sort of now-ish because there's loads, there's loads of them about. We saw loads and heard loads last night. Yeah. Oh, I've got a soggy McDonald's sugar. I'm going to put sugar in my coffee. Has it not all gone congealed? I don't know. It's damp. I don't know. Okay, now all right. I love that bird of prey sound. We could measure with like feet. Oh, another one. Yeah. We could measure with like feet counting the distance distance so we just know how to pitch them again like edge to edge it's worked all right it? worked really well 
wonder how many holes there are. Oh, another one. Right, so I need to set up. Grandeur. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a little bit on um, cleaning up a fire like this after a wild camp. What I do, I mean, there's all sorts of uh, schools of thought, <coughs> but my general rule is I dig a little pit for my fires so that they're easier to dispose of after. And uh, yeah, making sure it's out is important. I mean, this is damp woodland, the ground's all damp. so. You can see there, I've kind of turfed the ashes around, mixed it with the soil around, put on my excess water, and then I'm just going to leave that open now while we have breakfast, sort of half hour to an hour, and uh, just make sure it's completely out, which it is already, but I'll just leave it to cool properly. And then last thing, I'll kick those uh, mounds of soil that are next to it over the top so that it's covered completely. And that, to me, in my mind, is the sort of safe way to do it. I don't like fire scars, and I don't like leaving evidence of fire, you know, even even in a permission, but especially if you're wild camping. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not preaching, I'm just saying this is how I do it, and what, you know, what I'm comfortable with doing. But, uh, yes, I'm going to take down the, um, crikey, they're definitely shooting. I'm going to take down the, um, the awnings of our shelter. I don't, I don't know if I really showed it properly last night. We'll have a little look. It worked really well, but it does remind me of a you know, Vietnam encampment or a shanty town or something. But uh, yeah, have a look at this. So the two backward bungalows are almost in line with each other. They weren't quite because it was getting dark. Um, but the awnings here, you know, goes up. And then we got a bit of bungee from here up to our pole. Where's the pole? There. And uh, that's got a clove hitch on it that then comes down the other side to the bungee there. So that keeps that, you know, stretchy and taut. And then we've just done the same the other side and then paracorded out from that far tree across to that tree there. And that. You know, while they're not exactly taut, we probably could have moved the poles out a little bit each side to tighten up the fronts, but it served a purpose. It was a nice little uh, setup to have the fire in the middle, and uh, you know, the smoke kind of went up and it went away from us because the wind was right. And um, yeah, really happy with that. I think it worked well. And I'm starting to be a big fan of this bungalow. I've had it I've had it a little while and I used it once properly with me and Tink in it and um and it was okay, you know, I sort of condensated and it's a bit of a faff and all but really enjoyed it this trip. There's loads of room in there, especially on your own. Oh my god. And uh, yes, there's a little bit of condensation in the morning, but um yeah, I think it's a decent it's a decent thing. I think ideal for summer, summer sort of tarp camping in woods because of the bug net built in. Um, but even, you know, we're in the middle of winter now and it's suited well, shutting that bug net down just gives you a little bit extra sort of, you know, heat retention. But they're so roomy, you can sit up in them, 
you know, you get your lamp hanging in there. I like the colour, you know, the black is uh, stealthy, as it were, next to our Christmas lights. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing. I like it. And they work as a pair, you know, Warren's uh, got the same one. And, um, and uh, yeah, I think as a pair it works really well. He was saying last night, you know, do you think we could get them in a triangle? Sort of, you know, open them out, open the angles out and get a third one there. I think that would work. I think that would be quite cool. So, yeah. That is me done. I'm going to go and see how my breakfast is doing. And um, now it's time to go. Yes, tomato sauce? Yeah, why not? Thank you very much. That's half an egg, so you got one more. Yeah. Same again. Not yeah. maybe Yeah, same, exactly the same. Cheers. Okay, so there is our campsite. Clean and tidy. Looks good, doesn't it? Um, yes, that was a good night. Very chilled. Nice food, nice company. And uh, yes, I feel most relaxed. So, um, time to take myself home. Uh, I'm just going to say goodbye to Warren, and uh, then I'll say goodbye to you guys. Uh, have a look in the video description things I've mentioned links and you know Warren's channel and whatever else I was talking about I can't remember now, but um, Yeah, have a look there might be some helpful things Thanks very much Warren Nice one Dan. And, um, thank you for your company. Thank you for no excellent worries. food. It's nice isn't it? a great location. Yeah It was And a good pairing of two bunk rooms. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's, that's, very good. that's a good idea Special. Yeah but yes, so check out Linley's 360, link down below. Thank you. And uh, I will see you all soon. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good New Year's and all that jazz. See you soon. Bye for now.